New Year, same old podcast. Welcome to the Extra Podcast. My name is Daniel Mark, and I'm joined around the table by Greg Harris. Hello. You're one of the usuals here, Greg. Usual suspects. If this is the first time you ever um, tuning in to the Extra Podcast, it has been around for seven years or so. Hmm. I don't long need, time. I don't know. Yeah. That's speaking, out there. speaking of long time, we have a very special guest here. He is a uh, long time listener. And he's been on the pod. He's been on the show before, hasn't he? How many times have you been on the extra wait, 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 podcast? Wait, 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 wait. We gotta introduce him. Okay, fine. Greg, why don't you introduce him? The boss of me and everyone else that works at Northview Community Church, except for Jeff, is Steve Weens. Hey, good to hear you out there in Radio Land. Or good yeah. to talk to you. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> You got, you got your mistake. I love it. Radio Land. Land. Get your Radio mistake Land's out early. Yeah. It's That's fine. Great. Daniel made his, yeah. and then he decided to restart because yeah. he has the power. Yeah, I'm stuck I, with mine. I actually think your intro on the one you deleted was stronger. Was it? That's fine. I said, uh, new podcast. Uh, no, new year, new podcast. Yeah, it was strong. It was strong. Steve, was how many times have you been on the extra podcast? Well, I've been on twice, but one of the episodes never aired because it was deemed inappropriate. <gasps> was that? It was the bus. Was episode. that the school bus? The school bus. Oh, episode. That, all the that, lost episodes. Yeah. No, it's yeah. The the that tape, was the tape has been destroyed. That was well pre Daniel. Yeah. Right? Oh man, yeah, yeah. That was way back. Yeah. Vic was on that one with us. Was was that the first? Was that the first? Ep- first season. Oh no! I think that would have been the second season. Okay. Yeah. Because that. Yeah, we were on our way to a staff fun two. day, and then yes. yeah, it just became total chaos. So you fil- to- you recorded this podcast on the way to staff fun day. Yep. Yeah, and it wasn't very good. So no, we wasn't it? I think it, we recorded it on the way to. Um, we get a Christmas gift from the church as staff, oh, and that's we right used yeah, the yeah. Christmas gift one year to go to a White Caps game. Yes, yeah. and we recorded it on the way to the White Caps game. Chris Penner yeah. was driving the yeah. King Road bus. Yeah, yeah, and, and made dude, people very mad. Dude knows how to use a horn. <laughs> no joys he's, about that. He's backing up in the middle of intersections. He's doing things that are all kinds of illegal. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, that was a rough. That was a rough episode. Daniel's trying to fix a mic, but he can't. <laughs> can't do it. Daniel, what happened to you over well, the Christmas break? You last, seem off your game. I am off my game. Uh, my, la- my last year's motto went something like this: It was, "You win some, you lose some." And last year, I lost a lot, including at the towards the end of the year, right before Christmas Eve on the Wednesday, I went snowboarding. Where? In uh, Where? Grouse Mountain. Yeah. And I got a concussion. How? I don't remember. But someone's told you the story. Someone's told me the story. So I think uh, I did the Bunny Hill a couple times. It was great. It was the first time in a long time me snowboarding. Yeah. Probably be the last time in a long time. But yeah. I uh, <laughs> um, I did the Bunny Hill. The Bunny Hill was actually harder. Yeah. But then I did the green run. And I was, whoa, I'm actually quite good at snowboarding. I've yeah. done a little bit of surfing, a little bit of skateboarding stuff. So uh, that was, I was like, wow. And I remember doing that twice. Then I remember just being alert in the hospital. And I don't remember how I got there. And uh, it turns out, I think I hit my head. <laughs> I think I did. I had a helmet on, too. I was trying to take care. Hit my head um, and then kept going down the runs. I did like two or three more runs. But I just kept repeating myself. And I kept saying, I think I hit my head really hard. Then I went to first aid. Then next thing I know, well, I don't know this, but there's photos of me on a stretcher. And apparently I'm making jokes and... Uh, and then I go down in the gondola, and of course the gondola doors open, and all these young kids, oh, we're excited to ski, and they see a guy in a stretcher. <laughs> so that was, you know, a great Christmas gift for them. Then I am at the hospital, and so I remember waking up, talking briefly, and then being kind of lucid, Then because everything was kind of funny to me. Then I remember going in for the CT scan, and then I remember walking out. Hmm. And then the weirdest thing was uh, a couple days later, uh, the, the mountain was trying to get a hold of me just to see how their medical staff did and whatnot, the training. And how I get would, a phone how call. How would you rate our service? How would you rate our service? <laughs> and I was like, great. I, you know, I, I think I, I was really happy. I don't remember it. But I'm hearing this guy talk, <laughs> the guy who's who's um, in control, uh, like who I guess who was the first aid guy. Yep. But I'm hearing him talk, and, and I, I know your voice. And I can picture his face in my mind, but I don't remember ever having the conversation with him. Weird. It's so weird. That and so weird. he's he's talking, and I don't know who he is. And so I, th- I told him on the phone, I think I've met you and I don't remember this. And uh, anyways, we, he hung up 
we ended the conversation. I did some FBI research on Instagram, found the guy. And it was like, yeah, that's hundred percent the guy I was picturing in my mind. Super trippy. So never get a concussion. I spent all Christmas break staring at walls. That's why I'm off my game, guys. Okay, but how many concussions have you had? I've had two. This is my second. Yeah. So I'm still in concussion protocol, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Because you. It were. How many fingers is Greg holding up? I don't know. Two. There you go. Oh, there Nailed you go. it. Two. Yeah. So. Should be good. Because go. you played football growing up. Yeah. You're a bit of a football stud. Local local legend. Local, local legend. Starting quarterback, WJ Mo. Did you win provincials? No, we lost in the final on okay. TV. Sorry to bring it up. Really embarrassing. Yeah. Um, and then you went and played college ball in the States. Yeah, I rode the bench for two years. So Did you guys play in a bowl game? No. It was Division Three. Although, get this. I was on the team. My I knew my did you guys, team. Did you guys talk about stuff like, like do you guys realize Kyle played in the NCAA Final Four? Yeah, but he didn't play Division One. I, I don't think. Don't get into details. Doesn't matter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final Four NCAA. Kyle has lots of records at his school. I think still. So do you want to hear yeah. this record? Did, I, you know, did you know that Kyle's wife, Rebecca, is in the Hall of Fame? Yes. Yes. So I did know Volleyball that. Volleyball player. Yes. So that's pretty impressive. Take that, Kyle. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, so wait. What were you talking about? Your team? Dude, this team I was on? <laughs> I, knew, I knew when I was going to school. I was going because it was a Christian school. Yeah. Um, they were smaller class sizes and they had a football team and they threw a lot of scholarship money at me for academics. I was like, great. So I went, uh, cause D3 doesn't offer a- athletic, but they do okay. academic. They can subsidize it, whatever. Okay. So I go to the school. I knew they were bad at football. I didn't know how bad I, I when I got there, I, I, I learned that we hadn't won a game in our conference in 13 years. Wow. We hadn't won a conference game in 13 years. Yeah, so that's, my, pretty, that's pretty bad. It's so bad. It was like in a hundred something tries, we hadn't beaten any of the team. So you learned that, that once you were there? Once I was there. You didn't do any research no. on this team. You just thought, I don't know, they offered me something. Yeah, it's cool. The schools in Chicago. Were they the Were they the only school that offered you a scholarship? No, I, there's a couple other schools that did. But when it came down to it, the schools offering me the most money Alabama. was a school in Chicago. Okay. And a tiny school, down the actually, th- there's a school, <laughs> Dort College in Iowa, which a lot of um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christian reform, yeah. right? Reformed, yep. uh, Abbotsford Christian, a lot of students go yep. to Dort College. Yep. So I almost went to Dort. I visited there and I ended up choosing Chicago because I, <laughs> I was like, you know, Dort would be great, uh, except my Friday nights, what am I going to do? Go to Walmart? It was a cornfield. So don't, don't underestimate. You're, the, you're not really tall enough to go to a... Christian reform school. No, it's true. He'd stand out. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Chicago. It was great. But uh, man, I don't even know how we got here, guys. I, we got here because oh. I, I wanted to ask the question if like, so do you oh. have CTE now? Can crush, yeah, like what? That like thing that all the football players have. Oh, Because now you've had two concussions. Yeah. yeah. You I gotta might. take it. You gotta take things slow now. No, I do take it slow. I can't, I can't really read. Um, I had to get Steve, Steve here actually cover for me emceeing. I was supposed to MC Saturday night. He took over. Yeah. So for the 300 people who showed up Saturday night, they got stuck with me. <laughs> Steve's an underrated MC. He is an underrated MC. You get through it. Mm-hmm. It's no monkey business. No, no, no. Surprising serious, from an accountant. Serious business. <laughs> from an accountant. <laughs> 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 Um, speaking of, uh, you know, Greg, we were talking about new year. It's, uh, a year of change, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, we had our first lunch time yeah, today in the staff room. We How'd did. that go? Uh, Greg, it wasn't good, Daniel. Uh, s- here's the full story. Okay. Uh-huh. So on Sundays when I preach, uh, the kitchen staff between the second and third service on the Sunday morning, will usually put out, uh, like a bun like a gluten-free bun and some cheese. And then I'll usually take that upstairs and make a little cheese melt. And then I'll go and be ready for 1130, all cheese melted up, ready to go. So I did this and uh, I put the cheese in the toaster oven with the bread. Uh, not not thinking super well about, you know, because I decided to go to my desk, which is the exact opposite corner of the yeah, toaster. Let's, let's turn on it's like the, the it's appliances like the, and leave the room. It's like the <laughs> furthest you could be from the toaster. Yeah. Steve's in there, so I was like, it'd be, you were in the office, so I thought, whatever, something happens, Steve's here. Uh, I turn on the doesn't, toaster. Doesn't matter, Greg's got to preach. He's in the zone. Doesn't matter, I'm in, in the, the zone. zone. Doesn't yeah. matter. And then I think, I think to myself, I have a thought while I'm at my desk, and I think, you know what? It probably wasn't wise to put a piece of bread with cheese on it in the toaster oven and not be looking at it. So I went back into the room. And, uh, it was smokier than, than, uh, 
embers. Now, was it the cheese or the gluten-free bread? Yeah, it's hard to know now. Yeah. Uh, the coroner's getting back to me. <laughs> um, but the uh, early indications are that it was the cheese that did the damage. Okay. So the cheese dripped down. Uh, got on the. It wasn't the gluten free bread that caught on fire no. because it's kind of like cardboard. Nothing caught on fire. Actually, the, the Udi's bun is, is quite a delightful little bun. So, uh, so that caused all kinds of damage. I waited until it uh, cleared up and then I, I scraped off the cheese bits that I thought I did a good enough job of scraping off. Today. This is all happening between while you while the congregation's worshiping. No, 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 no. This is in between just, just services. Just to be clear, the people that are listening uh, live know that this is Tuesday. But for those not listening live on the radio right now, today's Tuesday. Tuesday morning. So this Today, is two, two days afternoon. later. It's the first Tuesday of the new year. Yeah, two days later. The Tuesday. I had thought I had cleaned it out thorough enough. I thought there's no not there's not going to be any residual effects from this. So I I used the toaster oven to make um, cheese melt leftover that I didn't eat on the Sunday and uh, I turn on the toaster oven and the cheese on the bottom caught on fire and there was a live flame in the toaster oven. Daniel took a Facebook live video. I just threw it on Instagram. Instagram. On the Instagrams. And uh, got some live footage. I think I stayed very calm throughout well, the whole process. Greg, you looked at it and you said, Oh, look, a flame. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then proceeded to just stand there and do nothing about it. No, no, I was game planning. Because my, here, you if, you open, there. if you open the door up too soon, now you're just letting smoke in and you don't have a game plan. So I thought about getting a cup and filling it with water, but I thought, no, you know what? I'm just going to take the bread out. So I did. And then I blew out the flame like it was my birthday cake. And then, and then I just ate the bread with cheese. <laughs> with his massive not burn. melted. So There's just, a massive burn on the bottom of one corner of his bagel. Yeah. So as the guy who's responsible for risk management, yeah. I think you're banned from electrical appliances. Okay. <laughs> Cuz all of them? Yeah. My understanding not just the toaster oven? No. no okay. Just all. Greg, I, my okay. understanding is that you yeah, you turned on the computer wrong in the yeah. after the power yeah. went out. Oh yeah. yeah. This weekend, yeah. yeah. You're right, I did. And yeah. Ed, if you're uh, here Saturday night and you're noticing all kinds of technical issues, that was Greg. It wasn't, it wasn't the power outages. No, it was Greg. That was me. Yeah, and actually, this isn't my first toaster issue. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. first toaster issue was, uh, granted, was dumber, was 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 worse than this one. This one was better. That's probably why I was so calm. <laughs> 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 I'm like, you know what? I've seen worse. It's not, I've, it's not my first rodeo. I've done worse toaster huh. stuff here. It doesn't even scorch the cupboards. <laughs> yeah. oh, seriously. <laughs> yeah, that one, uh, the cord got stuck in the toaster. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so that yeah. one, yeah. that's the one that, um, yeah, I offered to pay for that toaster. But we got Anyways, we, you're now called Fire Guy. So if you see Greg around the <laughs> around the fire church, guy. Be, hey, Fire Guy, you preaching today? You cooking a bagel today, Fire Guy? He's gonna Daniel's gonna try to make that stick. Hey, that's fine. I'd be, I'd be happy with that. <sighs> bring in, bring in the heat. <laughs> Hot take. Hot take. Hot right take. See, I don't have to. I just won't use a toaster anymore. I'm, I'll ask other people to use it for me. How much <laughs> tinfoil should I put on this before I put it in the microwave? <laughs> I should ask. Is it bad in microwave forks? <laughs> I'll ask someone who's around me, can you use a toaster for me? Steve, not letting me use it anymore. <laughs> I have to have eight months of, of yeah. incident-free toaster usage. You need remedial training. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh man. Whew. Steve's been a long-time listener of the podcast. He has been. Here's That's something right. I want to know. First of all, why? Have you listened to every episode? Uh, so I listen to every episode because I actually consider it part of my job to hear what gets said so I can clear, bring out when we need to clarify something that may have come across incorrectly. I do enjoy it. I've, I've grown to enjoy it. It kind of grows on you after a while. It's yep. an acquired taste. Yeah. But you said there was times where you really enjoyed it and then you didn't enjoy it. Like You got to yep. tell us about those. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, at the beginning it started out, it was it was unique, it was interesting. Darcy was hosting at the beginning. Darcy's a great host, asked lots of good questions, gets the conversation going. Uh, after a while, Darcy transitioned out. I don't know who came in and hosted after him. Greg did. Had, yeah, and then we had some of the interns doing it, various interns, and some of them do a better job than others. We kind of, it got to a point too where it was like, Everybody and their dog had to come in for the podcast, and yet three quarters of them wouldn't say anything. And so you're kind of like, okay, why are all these people in here? And uh, at six, there was an episode I, I went back in the vaults, and there was an episode with Greg, Steve. No, there was Greg, Ezra, Jeff, Andy, um, Darcy, Paul. Darcy no, and the no, other. Jeremy Lobdell. Yeah, Jeremy Lobdell was also. And then uh, Jeremy, 
the other intern. John. Oh, Jeremy. Uh, oh, I want to say uh, Eric, the intern. No, John. John oh, there was the, no, no, no. Jeremy, the intern. Jeremy, the intern. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We had we had Eric, the intern, for a while, and then yeah, Jeremy, the intern. Yeah. yeah. But, I, uh, yeah, so they've, you know, and and uh, what I what I found started making it better again, though, is actually I like when, you know, because Jeff often does a lot of the talking, but it's helpful when it gets into a dialogue as opposed to Jeff, Jeff just talking all the time. And so when you start getting a little bit of back and forth going on and whatnot. So mm-hmm. some of the ones with Kyle have been good when he comes in and does that. Andy usually does a pretty good job coming in and kind of offering a bit of a counterpoint at times and stuff, and that makes yeah. the discussion a little more interesting. Episode 200, if you want a good one, go back and watch 200. And watch Andy and Jeff duke it out. Duke. Duker. Duke. So do you have a favorite podcast moment, Steve? Mm, no. <laughs> do you, are you, did you like the days, I think we should do a little bit of podcast brainstorming because we're in year whatever yeah. and we've done however many seven. episodes. Right, this is episode 335. So we've done this a bunch. And let's be honest, not all of them have been good. Mm-hmm. So what makes it good? Lose some Greg. What makes a good podcast? See, I'm a firm believer in the segments. I yep. think the segments make the best podcast. When you when we had those days of the like, we did the banter, and then we asked Eric the intern something, and then he yes. gave it a go, and that was always fun. And then we had like one question, and then one thing we debated, and then we had like one or two cultural issue things we talked about a movie or something. I yep. like the segments. Yep, I think segments make for a good podcast. Greg, that's incredible. I'm I'm thinking we could do the segment thing. Bring that back. If you guys like that idea, email extra at northview.org. Email fireguy. Fireguy.org. Yeah. Do we take live callers? No. Oh, we no. should. You think we should? Oh, if we could do live callers, that would be fun. Really? Oh, yeah. Why? Mm-hmm. Like, just tell them we record at this time. Yeah. And then let people call in, but they can't hear what we're saying. Oh. If we FaceTime, you could you could rig it up so it's FaceTime. Yeah. And so they would FaceTime call us. Because that's what we're going to try and do with Brian Hurlbutt. We're going to try and get Brian Hurlbutt in here. So are you saying we would always do it on Facebook Live? Maybe. And then people could call in because people, they're watching on Facebook Live? We could Live? Facebook Live the podcast and people could type in comments and we could riff off right there. You know what I'm saying? Is that what you're getting after? Like live yeah. interaction? Yeah, I think some of it would be good. As long as you got the right callers. Most of the sports shows you listen to, the callers are not really that good. So like you're you're thinking like like a legit radio show where there's where yeah. we have the like open to caller segment yeah, and they great. know the topic ahead yeah. of time and we just yeah. let them go. Yeah. So Steve, you're a big, you're a business guy. You oversee all the financials here at the church. Is there someone we could fire or someone <laughs> fire guy or to, <laughs> to make room to be able to, you know, we could pitch this to praise one Oh six five and get the extra radio show, extra podcast played live. Sorry. Are you wanting to fire somebody as a podcast episode? Oh, cause I don't think we'd do that. Just, yeah, that's that would be gr- that would be very intense radio. Do that on Facebook Live. <laughs> Episode yeah. three fifty. Dude, that has one thousand likes. <laughs> See, no one likes you. We gotta do. We, next time we gotta fire two. <laughs> yeah, no, we wouldn't do that. So, no. but the the live thing is kind of interesting. Yeah, not all the time. Just do like I don't know, once a month, once every couple months. Mm-hmm. Extra live. Yeah. yeah. See the podcast I like often, where it's just a conversation, but the conversation tends to go really, really well. One of the best ones has been, was me, Andy, and Paul in recent memory. It was one of the better ones we had, I think, in my recollection. It's just because your memory shot. Yeah, Yeah, because I don't remember much. Let's ask the guy who has no memory. Concussion protocol. They put the tent over my head. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. That's fair. Well, that's it. Are we done the brainstorming, Greg, or do you want to keep going? I don't know. I got, that's, you're the one who hosts this. Do you have enough? I have enough. I mean, we are, uh, we should actually talk something solid because we've been going for 19 minutes here. Wow, I thought that was good stuff. That's fine. It was solid, but I want to get something kind of kind of theological, kind of uh, m- musings of last years, kind of what you learned. Greg, you know, I've seen everyone has been, you know, writing articles about, uh, you know, the 10 best books I read this mm. year or the 10 best movies I saw this year. Greg, what were the best books? And, and Steve, what were the best books you read this year? Uh, or any books that you read this year? So that here, you would also recommend to the listeners. Here's here's one that you guys have heard me talk about before. I'm just going to say it again. I think the Benedict, Benedict Option. Option was a good book. If you haven't read it yet, you could. Uh, it's by Rod Dreher. Um, although it's, it is interesting, um, the, the basic premise of his book is that culture is becoming increasingly hostile to Christianity. 
And so in light of that, how, what strategy should Christians employ to better prepare themselves to engage in that kind of a society? Um, I've been reading some recent criticisms of the book that I actually think are very uh, helpful. And they've been from, from uh, the black Christian community. Uh, and their point is basically like, look, Rod, what you're describing is actually not a new experience for a lot of people in the black community who have been living in some regions of the States in this kind of, a uh, uh, oppressed, um, context already. So their critique of his book was basically, it's just, it's too white centric in terms of your describing, like now it's getting hard. Whereas before it was easier, their point was no, it's always kind of been hard for certain people. Yeah. So that was actually a really good critique of the book. And so that's something I've been thinking about more of how, how, um, how biased we are to our points of view when we're making arguments about things. Uh, but still a good book. I, I still think the basic premise is great, which is we should intentionally retreat and focus in Christian community for the purpose of intentional engagement. I think that's a great um, thesis. Anyways, uh, another book that I haven't talked about before, I think you can download as a free PDF. I think you can. It's called The Art of Turning by Kevin DeYoung. And uh, it's all about the conscience and how as we grow as Christians, a part of our growing is our conscience becomes holier. Mm. And the thing I thought was interesting about the book is you don't hear a lot about the conscience in Christian thinking and in, and in the conversation of growing in Christ likeness and sanctification. You don't hear a lot about the conscience and how the conscience can either lead us astray. Our conscience can be seared in sin where we actually think something is good. We legitimately think something is good and it's not. And yet as we grow in our Christ likeness, our conscience actually also grows in holiness. I, I think that's worthy of some reflection. Um, and then a book I'm, I'm reading now, I took a break from it for a bit. I'm, I'm jumping back into it now is, um, how to think by Alan Jacobs. And I'm interested in reading it mostly because of my work with the intern program and, and just realizing that increasingly we aren't being prepared and we aren't preparing students well to engage in critical thinking. Um, we're reactive. We think in sound bites, we think in tweets, we think in Facebook posts, we don't think long about things. We don't think hard about them. And Jacob's book is basically describing how it is that people come to different conclusions and why it is we believe what we believe. So to interact with that, Greg, do you think that we, um, we don't, we just don't think as much because we can just look at our screen? Yeah. I think we have the most access to information anyone's ever had Mm -hmm. and we do so little with it. I think we, we assume that because we've read something once that we've actually thought about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whereas in reality, we've probably read it mostly to figure out how we should be reacting to it. Right. And then we react to it. And then we think we've engaged with the issue when actually we haven't actually sat down and thought through the issue. The other thing I thought was really interesting about his book was uh, one in the early chapters, he talks about how no one actually thinks for themselves. Yeah. Like we, we sell this idea of you need to think for yourself, but we all think in the community context that we're in. So you, your thinking will usually match the kinds of people that you are around. That's uh another term for that is a plausibility structure. Yep. Right. The people that you surround yourself with, you tend to take on their views. And if you want to be in with that group, you'll begin to think the way they think. So yep. you're accepted by them. Yep. And so a so, book that I just finished reading uh, is called how to be an atheist mm. by Mitch. I think it's Mitch Stokes. Okay. Is the guy's name. Um, quite interesting. I think the premise, which would kind of flow into that a little bit is, um, you know, talking about, science and where it's at and, you know, kind of the arguments get put forward by most atheists as to why they wouldn't be Christian and um, learning to be a little bit more skeptical of those arguments. Science makes a lot of claims and science, you know, has done a lot of good things. No two ways about it. Um, And there, you know, there's a lot of great things that come out of it, but science starts to make some of these claims that go way beyond Mm. what the science actually supports. Mm -hmm. And yet because a scientist said it, it must be true. Mm. And, and yet, you know, it's, it's not, or it might not be, or it can't be known, you know, and they start really moving mm. well beyond what's the area of science. And, right. and I think that's a big part of it, of just not just taking in information and saying, well, okay, I've, I've read this on, an, on the internet somewhere, so it must be true. And this must be the way things are. Mm. Um, you know, it was interesting, just side note here is listening to 
uh, Al Mohler this morning was talking about there's this guy in the New York Times who's written like three articles asking, you know, am I a Christian and asking different leaders. And uh, so, you know, he, he asked Tim Keller the question and he asked uh, uh, one of the Cardinals in New York and then he asked uh, uh, Billy, um, former, no, former president of the United States. Bill Clinton. No, prior to that. Uh, George guy. W. Peanut guy. Um, Jimmy Carter. There, there you go. go. Oh. There you go. Jimmy Carter. Anyways. Peanut guy. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Carter's peanut farmer. Oh. I don't know. That might not be true. Don't hold me to that. Don't okay. don't just believe it just because I said it. There you go. Anyways, well, think, uh, think about it, fire guy. <laughs> but but is but is you know but it's interesting. Here's a guy who's struggling with his faith, yep. and wants to know if he's a Christian. But like he just has trouble with the miracles, and so he has trouble believing in the virgin birth and trouble believing in the resurrection. You know, and, and it's because science has proven all these things that miracles don't happen. And I'm like, well, A, you know, if you believe there's a God, then mm. this God should be able to do miracles. And if you don't believe in miracles, why would you want to be a Christian anyways? Mm. Like, mm. I, like to think, well, I want to be a Christian because I like the things that Jesus taught regarding morals. Mm. It's kind of like, well, uh, man, that's like, is that all you want out of it? Mm. That just seems so empty. Mm. So anyways, that was a good book. Totally switching topic is uh, totally switching topics is another book that I've read is called The People of Power Skills by uh, a congregant in our church, Trevor Thronis. Uh, actually, and because I you know am responsible for management and whatnot, I like reading books on management, and this is a, a great book on just uh, dealing with people. Which at the end of the day, anybody who's in management knows that's kind of your biggest issue is how do I deal with different people and different personalities. So I highly recommend that book. It's available on Amazon, or you can talk to Trevor locally and get a signed copy from him. Steve, this is one of the first times that we've done like a product placement on the uh, oh, on the no, no, podcast. No, no, is it no not? product placement here. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, though. That was very smooth. You just snuck that in there. I'm <laughs> really I'm really happy with that. No, uh, we actually we th- thought about one of the brainstorm ideas. We should get Trevor Thronis on the podcast. Yeah, Trevor's a really interesting guy to talk to. He's got an interesting background, and uh, and he's a very knowledgeable guy in his area. So he'd be good to have on. That'd be good. Um, I, one of the comments I was going to make with Greg, Greg just stepped out. He got a phone call from Jeff. I think Jeff's salty because he's not on the program today. He's, he's our first live caller. Yeah, he, he, I know. I was going to say he could have been our first live. That's why I was uh, pointing at it, but then yeah. I think they're talking about something important. Uh. I was going to say uh, we don't spend a lot of time thinking anymore. Uh, Meaning like we look at our phones a lot and you just kind of scroll on Instagram or you scroll on Facebook or Twitter and it's just a lot of mindless information. Whereas I was hearing a thing where um, Ed Sheeran gave up his phone for two years Mm. and he said, you know, I think a lot more. He says when I'm in the office or when I'm in, you know, the doctor's office, I'm waiting for an appointment. You just sit there and you think. And he said, I get a lot more done. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I was just on holidays. So I was away for 10 days. And we were staying in a spot that had uh, lousy Wi-Fi and no cell reception. And it was probably the most relaxing holiday I've had in the last 10 years or more. Because there be times where it's like, oh, I should check my email. Oh, I can't. Okay. And, you know, as a result, I read a couple of books, had some great conversations with my wife. We had a great time. And it was very relaxing just to kind of unplug. But also it does allow you those times to focus in on some things more. And I think that is one of the things. We kind of get uh, so distracted and so many things are popping up at us that – you know, I mean, I don't know if you find sometimes you're reading a blog post and like somebody write a blog post that's probably, I don't know, 10, 15 paragraphs and you kind of get halfway through and it's like, oh, I can't be bothered to read this whole thing. You know, yeah. it's like, yep. you know, and, and and versus, you know, like let's sit down, actually read a book, read a, a complete stream of thought regarding something that that actually gets you to think deeper about it. You know, I think that's part of going back to what Greg was talking about earlier. I think that is crucial to getting us to think is actually spending some more time delving into it as opposed to just, you know, a minute here, a minute there. Yeah. So that's actually interesting. One of the books I read this year that was, I think I've talked about it before on the program was I read a book called, um, amusing ourselves to death. Mm. And I, I'm blanking on the author ever since the concussion. I don't remember the guy's name. <laughs> oh, well, people um, can Amazon it, but it's called, it's on Amazon, uh, amusing ourselves to death. And, uh, the whole premise of this book is we, we no longer, um, care about information. We no longer care about learning. We just want to be entertained. Mm. And so we, the reason we don't finish, uh, an article is because we're not entertained by it. Yeah. We don't, we'd rather go see a movie and watch a documentary than read someone's writing on it. Someone who has like a PhD or is an academic yeah. on that specific field and, uh, discourse, academic discourse, you know, 200 years ago, it was common that, you know, when Abraham Lincoln was 
running for president. Him and his opponent would show up at places and they would have all their writings of what they had. All the people, you know, the common person who could read, because everyone could read uh, at this point. It was unique in, in the Americas, that in North America, that everyone who came across and was living there, uh, probably 95% of the people could read, as opposed mm-hmm. to if you went back to England, not as many could. Um, and so all public discourse happened through reading and then public speaking. So you would read all their arguments in advance and then you'd show up to this lecture. And because you're so used to seeing these people, uh, you know, seeing their arguments and the flow and, okay, they're just building their argument here. Okay. That's the first part of it. And it it would take its time. They would sit through discourses where it'd be, okay, the opponent talks for five hours. (laughs) That's a long time. Okay. And then we're going to take a little (laughs) break for lunch. Okay. Or a little dinner. And then we'll come back for the next one. Abraham Lincoln will be sharing for, wait for it, five hours. (laughs) And people would sit there politely and con- and like they were fully engaged because that's how yep. they were used to public discourse. But now we can barely yep. Um, yep. keep keep entertained for that long. It's just so. Anyways, that's an amazing book. If you want, kind of just rock my world. Yeah. Was that, that written by somebody local? No, it was Neil <laughs> Postman's the guy's name. Neil right. Postman, and you know. it, he's dead now. But it's an amazing book. Yeah. He was a sociologist, I think. Good. So that was a really good one. Um, I'll just say the other ones I, I read this year, I read a lot of Tim Keller, which was really, really great. He has a book that I'm doing on Immerse uh, called Center Church, yeah. and there's three parts in it. The first part was, I think, Shaped by the Gospel, which is amazing. The second one that I'm really loving was uh, it's Loving the City, where he talks about doing ministry in an urban context. So I, I really enjoyed those from Keller. Read t- Keller's book on prayer, which Greg referenced in the sermon this week. That's a great book. You know, if you are... Um, we're going to be talking about prayer in the sermon series coming up these, these next few weeks. And I'd recommend that you go pick up Tim Keller's book on prayer and read that, um, alongside of it. I think it'd be really, really helpful. Yeah. The, uh, other books too. I, I dabbled in some, uh, literature, Steve dabbled in a little bit of literature to, uh, one of the ones I read, I read East of Eden yep. by John Steinbeck, which I highly recommend so, that. So book. don't give away the ending, but what's the general story? The general story is it, it is kind of, um, it's three generations of one family in the Salinas Valley in California. And so growing up, but it's kind of, um, it's, it's like a Jacob and, uh, Esau or it's a Canaan, sorry, Canaan Abel story where it's, it's about these two brothers and their, their, um, anger towards each other and whatnot. And, uh, it's just very interesting the way he writes it. All the, all the, uh, protagonists, um, their names typically start with an A. And all the antagonists, their names start with a C. And so when you're reading it, you kind of know, and, and he's telling this Cain and Abel story throughout. Anyways, it's a longer book, but it's one of the most amazing books I've read uh, as, a, as a novel. And you get to the, you know, because someone was saying, Tessa, who works um, with the young adults here, she was saying, oh, the ending, Daniel. You're going to love the ending. And I, so, I, of course, I love spoilers, so I went to the ending and read the last page, and it made no sense. And so I kept reading the book, but then once you've read the you know, the 599 pages and you get to page 600 where it's the ending yep. and then you read the ending. It was one of the, the most incredible endings to a book. It was just, it kind of floored me. I had to stop and think for a bit. See, that's kind of like reading the Lord of the Rings before you've read the Hobbit. Look at you with your <laughs> Lord of the Rings comments. <laughs> I know you guys love Lord of the Rings here. We or, actually, lo- or Loader as I call it. I love Loader. Loader. <laughs> <laughs> Loader. We, uh, our family watched Lord of the Rings again this Christmas. Every year. Here's another brainstorming thing for the podcast. Okay. I think the the like guest contributor would be an interesting thing with what so here's the context for that. So we had that big little joking bit about Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and all that stuff and fan theory. And then uh, a congregant sent us an article he wrote talking all about how great Lord of the Rings are, is, and all this kind of stuff. And it was Glorfind- well Glorfindel and well written article. He's probably listening right now, smiling, knowing that I'm, ta- I'm thinking about him, but not saying his name. And uh, we'll call him Glorfindel. We'll call him Glorfindel. <laughs> I think it'd be interesting to bring in people like him. Yeah. About once we, because sometimes we go off on a rant on something like silly and, yeah. and dumb, and then it actually sparks a conversation amongst another set of, of listeners. I think it would be interesting to, to interview some of those people and bring them in and say, okay, why did this make you so mad? Or yeah. Why do you enjoy this so much? Why are you so passionate about it? Yeah, exactly. So if you're out there listening to this program right now, email fireguy at Northfield.org. That's right. Or G Harris. 
I'll bounce back. <laughs> no, I'll be good. That would actually be a good article or a good uh, little podcast. I think it would. Episode. Greg, we were just talking about other books. Um, do you have a final one? No, I gave oh, you he, my... Jeff called you on the you phone. My, yeah. Jeff, I thought uh, we should have brought him on as a live guest. Do you want to call him back and see what happens? No. Okay. He's on vacation. He was calling me and I thought I should answer because my job description says other duties required by the pastor. So, and he might be requiring something. Exactly. So I answered the phone and then I I was actually going to wait and see like, Oh, should I like, is he just like wanting to talk to me about how the Seahawks didn't make it into the playoffs or is he calling to talk about something work related? It was work related. And I thought, yeah, I'm not going to try to steer the conversation to say, Hey, do you want to go live on X right now? Cause he'd probably say, no, I'm on vacation. So that's why that happened. Hmm. See, this is behind the scenes stuff yeah. that people are like clamoring for. So are we allowed to talk about the Seahawks or is that off topic? No, here? we're allowed. Because well, like, seriously, man, when they talk about there's no coaching changes coming this year. I, oh is that gosh. they said? I didn't hear that. Uh, I'm like, come on. There's got to be some coaching changes. You win some, you lose some. And we've been losing a lot, Steve. I'm telling you, that offensive line is a disaster. And I don't know how Tom Cable keeps his job. You know what? Here's something our listeners need to know. Steve is a well-informed football fan. Oh, yeah. I like my football. I want to have a football podcast, which is just Steve. Steve and Jeff. And Ooh. I'll moderate it, but I want to hear them just talk back and forth. Yeah. We can yeah. do that sometime. Yeah, we can do that. A- an extra, extra So, so, so inspirational story of the day. I don't know if yeah. you guys watch any college football. I kind of like me some U.S. college football, though. And I was watching the UCF game, oh my, UCF yes. versus Auburn. Yes. So I was I was building the IKEA shelf while I was doing it. So I just come and check the highlights. But uh, there's a guy who plays for the Seahawks, Shaquille Griffin. He's a cornerback. He's the next Richard Sherman. He's great. His brother, Shaquem Griffin, plays yeah. for UCF. He's the starting defensive end on what was the number 12 ranked team in the nation who knocked off Auburn, who's supposed to be one of these SEC powerhouses. This guy plays. He's got one hand. Yeah. He's missing the other hand. It, from he birth. wasn't born. Yeah. He's yeah. not born. He's got a, like, kind of like, it just looks like a stick. Yeah. Yeah. And he's the starting defensive end and he was making plays and he the was, guy, like he's, he's, he, they expect him to get drafted. It'd probably be a later round draft pick, but he's going to get drafted in the NFL. He was terrorizing guys. But he's like, yeah, don't, you know, and he, they were talking to him and telling his story and he's one of these guys like, said, don't, don't let anybody tell you you can't do something because, mm. you know, yeah. people told me there's no way I'm going to play football and here I am. You know, stuff. And it was, it was, I gotta say that was a very inspirational moment watching that guy play. So is that why you watch sports? Do you watch for, sports for the stories? No. Why I, do you watch sports? Uh, I, well, I don't watch sports. I watch football. Okay. That's like the only sport I like watching. Huh. But you're a big golfer. You don't watch golf? Uh, a little bit, but not a lot. No. Once in a while. Like I like watching a bit of the major tournaments, but even this year I saw, I don't even think I saw a full round of any of the major tournaments. No, so, but uh, yeah, football, football is the sport, except I'd never, well, I didn't like it when my boys played it because you get hurt too much playing football. Right, Concussions. Daniel? Oh yeah. <laughs> Concussions, man. Concussions, knees, those kind of things. Yeah, actually that was one of the greatest answers to prayers. I finished my football career without a knee injury. Hmm. Yeah. Well, friends, I think this has been a, uh, quite the episode. The first of many, you know what this, I, by the end of this year, we're going to be getting close to episode 400. Will we hit 400 this year? No, we won't hit it this year. Uh. So next year. <laughs> You'll have but to before, come back, before come back 2020. Next year. Yeah. Come before back, 2020. Yeah, come back next year for episode 400. <laughs> Man. Uh, unless you want to be a longtime listener and keep, keep up with this. I think um, Steve should always be here on the first January, first week of January episode. We should have Steve come back and provide a little like, you know, the year in review shows. Yeah. Steve's a faithful listener. He should provide some year in review. You know what, Steve? Give us a year in review. Just two minutes. You have a minute to do one minute. You have one minute to do a year in review. Go. Wow. Throw me on the spot now. Romans. That's all I can remember. From Romans. Tri-City. Lots of Romans. Tri-City launched. We, we planted a church. Uh, you know what? Just to let people know, because we don't talk about these things actually enough um, to communicate, but Tri-City is doing really well. Uh, Christmas Eve, they had over 500 people attend that church this year. That's phenomenal. Uh, Mission had like 750 people there for Christmas Eve. That's phenomenal. Uh, so those those are some great things that have happened. Um, hmm. Oh, beyond that, we got six immersed students now. Uh, that's great. So that's a highlight. Five um, and a half. Oh, five and a half. Because <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> he, Daniel can't read. For I can't read yet. So yeah. So uh, you know, next year next year we get to graduate our first immersed students. Yeah. Lord willing. So that'll be an exciting thing. What That'd else? Cool. Anything else, Steve? Review wise, what are we looking forward to? 
It's good. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What more do you want? I want to know uh, if we're going to be back in Romans again. Yeah, we're going to. All I think about. All I think about is Romans, Greg. No, that's not true. When are we you back preached, in Romans? You, you, we did a prayer sermon this weekend, and you said, "Oh, I'm going to do Romans." Yeah, and yeah. I did. Yeah. Uh, we are jumping in, so we're doing the prayer series, and then we're going to. The plan is to go from the prayer series and then do a biography on Abraham. And Which part of Abraham is Romans? Uh, right, we're, we're going back. We're ending the Abraham sermon series by going to Romans four because we skipped Romans four. We did Romans one through three and then we did five through eight and Romans four is all about Abraham. And so we're going to do the life of Abraham and then explain Romans four in light of just looking at his life story. And then the fall will hit. And then next fall we'll be back in Romans, Romans Romans nine through probably 11, maybe 12. And just to let people know, because some people are probably wondering, hey, what happened to the prayer week? Because usually we start off the new yeah. prayer week. Uh, we're doing a little bit different because we were doing a sermon series on prayer. We wanted to delay that until we'd done some of the teaching on prayer. And so January 22nd to 26th Sixth. is the week of prayer here at uh, the Abbotsford campus. Mission, I think, has actually got a prayer night going on tonight. Um, so if you're listening to this after today, then that's too late. <laughs> but they might also be doing something as part of that week of prayer as well. Yeah, which I recommend. I mean, even growing up, I was I would go to those in high school, and uh, I loved the prayer nights. I absolutely mm-hmm. loved them, and so it's one of the highlights for me is going to the prayer nights because you have, you know, two hundred people mm-hmm. who are there so passionate about the church and so passionate about the Lord that uh, you, you get them together praying. It's just really powerful. So it's it's encouraging to it's encouraging to me. So it's good for your soul, one because you're praying to God, but two, it's good for your soul to be surrounded by people who love the same thing yep so i can't recommend that enough prayer week coming up january 22nd 22nd. to 26th well this has been a episode for the history books hasn't it guys we got steve on the program we started off a new year and uh, we look forward to being back next week on the new year new podcast extra